Easy Jackson with the dreads. <laughs> yeah, I just cut them joints in, in in February. Oh, you just cut yours? Yeah, I just cut them in February. Uh, what made you cut them? It was a reason or not? Yeah, it's a reason. You know, a, a, a lot of people don't think about locks this way, but I was always raised like our locks like are connected to our our spirituality, our right. our personality, and everything. And I was carrying a lot of grief in mind. Like I lost a lot of people over the past few years, and it was just like it was just a lot of sadness caught up in them so I you know I just wanted a fresh start you know what I mean it's crazy because like I never really um I think maybe because mine were at such a young age I never really tied mine to like a spiritual thing yeah but I definitely held it like some, it, it, it held a special place in my heart yeah it's your power it, it definitely exactly. is your power. that's what I used to say I yeah. used to say that yeah but I didn't understand that the, the uh, I didn't understand the depth of like like I guess um, the spirituality behind it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying uh, just yeah, just how just young. And, yeah, I mean it is. I, I I gained a lot of strength when I was growing mine, mm. but um, but you know life hits you and things happen. My mom died, my brother died, you know a bunch of other people I lost, and um and that was really like affecting me and a lot of a lot of you know my lifestyle you know was kind of not where I wanted it to be, and I could kind of feel it in my head you know mm. what I'm saying? i think it's one of those things that as you get older you start to understand and um yeah i just need a fresh start man i had to cut them let them joints go <laughs> it's crazy because i had cut mine because um the same time i i chose my name so like i was uh, i just turned 21 mm -hmm. and i was like man i'm a grown man now like i don't want no dreads for some reason i connected dreads with just my childhood because like i yeah. had in my entire childhood it was like oh yeah long as hell yeah so i'm like man i'm gonna change it then i'm gonna change my name to Mr. J Hill, like I'm Mr. J Hill now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And like that, that was the start of this. Well, that's the same thing. You know what I mean? It's like you felt you felt yourself reaching a level of maturity mm. that was different from that guy. You know what I mean? Like when I look at some of these videos, I'm like, that's a different guy right there. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like the wh where his mind was, you know. And it should always be like that. We should always be evolving and changing. I think I think that you know adds the color to our lives. Right. Well, let's get this interview started, man. Uh, Easy Jackson is in the building. Yeah, Mr. J Hill, uh, live conversation, uh, conversation series, conversation with dope people. And this guy right here is definitely one of the doper people I've never. I don't know if I met you in person. I don't think so. Very I, briefly. Okay. Yeah, just right. just like brief introduction. Dab okay. Up type. But man, I've yeah. heard a lot about you. Yeah. Um, I've heard good things about you. Like we probably could have a two-hour conversation. Yeah. We. We're not going to do that today, but we probably could do that. Just the history that I heard about you, like you definitely one of the doper MCs. Thanks, um, man. I appreciate that. You were into some politics a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I worked. I worked in politics for like a decade. Um, you, you did podcast a mm -hmm. little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I heard heard yeah. a little about you, man. I heard yeah. like you like. I want to get. In, I do want to touch on some history though, okay. because just because like the, the the age gap, and I would definitely love to just be brushed up on my history, right? Like yeah. when you were coming up, I'm uh, making music. Who were like some of the hot artists in Baltimore? Um, I'm a, I was a big fan of uh, Scar Akbar. Mm, um, still around? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Ooh and Brownfish, but but, but Brownfish and uh, this rapper named Ooh, he was a big mentor of mine. But um, you know, I started really messing with Baltimore hip hop around that Mully Man, Boss Man, Scar Akbar, and the Arabs. Damn. You know that era. Um. That was really who, back in the day, I used to listen to, like, there was a crew called Concrete, um, K-Mac Knockville. I don't uh, know if you know him. He nah. had Emerson <laughs> Village. K-Mac's still doing music. Actually, his sons is doing music now. Um, um, there was a crew called LMS. They used to uh, they used to play their stuff on Strictly Hip Hop um, on 88.9. Um, and, yeah, it was like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot. Bro, hold up, man. I feel like, so for you, this is just like, you know, regular conversation for me i feel like you dropped so many gems that my generation wouldn't even understand like yeah yeah one um just the scar akbar the the the, the boss man this is what i know right because yeah. it was so many that i didn't know yeah and then even like dropping the music on strictly hip-hop on 88.9 right yeah. which is like a, um i don't want to say a jazz station but it's like it's like your, your in, what is it npr yeah is it, it's, it's really it's, an it's NPR, NPR, station, npr station right yeah. but they had one of the hottest hip-hop friday shows. nights from 12 to 5. yes in friday. baltimore people yep. do not know this yeah. and, and back in my day it was crazy because i hate saying back in my day god damn talk uh, to me talk to me man. i'm it loving it it was crazy because the culture was was so live if you was doing it all night on friday night 
you would at 5 a.m. You would stay up for a couple more hours because 92Q played Rap Attack in the morning on Saturday. Oh, shit. So you got all of that, you know what I mean, the the newest Jay-Z record, Wu-Tang, all that stuff that dropped. You would hear it f- between Friday night and Saturday morning. Wow. Yeah. That's dope yeah, as yep, hell. Yep, Yo, yeah. talk to me about, uh, I'm going to get back into the artist or whatever. Talk to me briefly about uh, just the radio scene just back in the day, and and not even just Baltimore, right? I say on a... On a on a wider scale, because even like Funk Flex got his name off of what he did on radio in New yeah, York, right? Yeah. The, how he used to drop records, how he was yeah. the premiere songs, and you could never do that now. Like, yeah. that could never, it, YouTube no. or Instagram or Twitter, like, you're never going to yeah. be able to premiere a song on radio now. But Baltimore, I mean, it's always been hard for us in Baltimore. Mm. Like, our radio stations, you know, outside of Strictly Hip Hop, all we have is 92Q. Mm. There was a time when we had 92Q and I think V103, and at, for a short time there was like a 105.7. Yep, 105, yep. Like, but 92Q has always been like the dominant station. And to get your music on there, it's just, you know, it's, it's so always hard. been hard. You know, it's, it's, hard. it's always been an uphill, uphill battle, but I'm determined to figure it out now. I got my own label, you know, I'm putting all that aside, and I'm like, what, what do we need to do to get get my artists on, you know, on, on this station. And then today, you don't even need it. You know what I mean? Now you don't really need radio. Mm. It's just a valid, it's, just, it's home validation right. to be played on the radio station in your city. But um, That's actually, yeah, that's actually real. Yeah. But what about, um? so, let's, let's get back to the artists, right? Um, How do you look at the artists that were, like, super hot back then, but might not be as hot to the younger generation because I want to give them their respects. Like, Scar Akbar, right? Yeah. I heard a lot about Scar yeah. Akbar. I still hear a lot about him, but I don't know too much. I wasn't, like, present yeah. in the music to understand yeah. it, if that makes sense. But he's still making music. Yeah. How, like, See, wh- man, what do you think about I'm that? I'm such a fan of Baltimore that I've always kept my ear to what's going on. Mm. So, for me, I think the difference between artists back then and artists now is the artists, the younger artists that are coming up in Baltimore now, they have a better understanding of what the world outside of Baltimore is looking for. Mm, okay. So when I would play, you know, I, I I did four years in the Navy. So when I would play our stuff compared to cats from Atlanta and New Orleans and New York, and our mixes weren't good. Okay. You know, we didn't mix and master our records well. Um, we didn't We didn't market and promote ourselves very well. Um, and I think a lot of the younger rappers now coming up in Baltimore, they're doing that a lot better. Their stuff has more quality. Their videos have more quality. Um, uh, it's just that, you know, they're, they're at that level where I think we're now ready to be in the mainstream. You, you know, as seen through, you know, from artists like Shorty Shorty uh, and Take Cobang, Di Trinata, you know what I mean? The, the, the work that they put behind their stuff uh, it's just a lot more polished than it used to be. And we like that, though. You know what I'm saying? Baltimore, we like the rough, you know, rugged. Yeah, we love it. We loved it. Uh, but when it got outside of Baltimore, you know, it was it was looked at as not, you know, but not, how, not but good But specifically, enough. how do you look at the artists that were, like, really, like, arguably, like, the Take Bangs, shit, the Detronados, like, Scar Akbar, back in that time, was, like, yeah. Uh, shorty, shorty, like yeah. boss man I mean, he was, yo, was Scott, one of the first ones. We was just talking about this. Scott Akbar had DVDs, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, like local rappers in Baltimore did not have their own DVDs. And I remember one DVD actually like chronicled his whole life story. Like, mm. you know what I mean? You got to learn like who Scar was on this DVD that you bought from him or you bought in a store somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I think he kind of... I think Scar is one of those artists that kicked the door open for us as entrepreneurs and kind of mm. showed us that, like, you know, you can take this thing and really make it work for you and, like, fuck the industry, fuck what they saying, like, we can do this, you know what I mean? And then you would look up and you would watch, like, the BT Cypher and Scar is, like, standing in the background, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, he was definitely a, a, he was definitely a, a, a trendsetter, like a, a road paver, I think, for a lot of us. To kind of watch how him and Mully and and Boss move, it 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 set a blueprint for a lot of us coming. So up. to see them now though, like still making music, still trying to fight that fight, it's encouraging. It's encouraging. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Because because this thing is not. I think I think it's a it's a misconception that rap is a young man's game. Like it's a young art form. Mm. It's the youngest genre probably of all the genres. Definitely, rap is not hip hop is not as old as jazz 
or even rock or none of that shit. So we got to remember, we don't even have senior citizen rappers yet. We still got some of the pioneers still around. Right. Like, the and they're not, they're not 70 yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. So, so it's like, you know, what you're going to tell... You gonna tell a seventy year old jazz musician that he too old to be playing the sax if he get up there and kills it on the sax? Mm. Like, no, I, I love seeing them continuing to push and recreate themselves and and make music because their fan base still wants it. They're growing with them. Wow. You know what I mean? They checking back in like and and these younger artists they're gonna they're gonna have the same thing. The uh, the fans that are rocking with them now they're gonna still be checking for them 10, 20 years from now. And just because you're not you know, super famous or whatever. I think people forget that it's about the love for the craft, man. Mm. Like, if you still love it and you still doing it, that's 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 inspiring to me. And these guys, they still love it. Damn, okay. I, yeah. I, I love that perspective. And, yeah. like, I feel like you would only get that perspective from somebody that was in it. Yeah. Right, like, that was immersed in it. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of us young guys or just in my generation, if anything, just don't really understand. So we yeah. our, our our perception is so different because we yeah. don't really get it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But because you come from a you come from an era that um, things were kind of already there for you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like in a sense, like like I've been teaching hip hop classes for years. We never had no rappers come to my school and have rap class with us. I never you had that either though. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm 30, so like, yeah. it's, well, yeah, I'm kind of I mean, in the middle well, yeah, of- Younger than that, yeah. Yeah, 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 but I never really had that, but I get it, I get yeah. it. Cause there's yeah. a lot of people doing that now, but let's, all right, let's get into um, Easy Jackson. Okay. What makes you start, what makes you want to get into the music industry, man? Um, I don't know, man. I think I had always been rapping. My mother was a poet. Uh, my father was a painter and a jazz musician, jazz singer. Damn. And so I kind of grew up around music and the arts and hip hop was, you know, that was my form of expression. Was your so, parents from Baltimore too? Yeah, yeah, my mom, my mother's from Baltimore, my father's from Chester, Pennsylvania, and they met in New York, so I was mm. born in New York. Okay. Um, and then we moved back here with my mother when I was like nine. And it was, it was, it was niggas rapping outside. You know Man. what I'm saying? Older niggas rapping that's outside. So dope. I can see it like, right now. Yeah, yeah, that shit, that's what made me want to do it. Like I was like, damn, that's dope. Like. You know, you have people freestyling and just rapping about random shit that's happening on the block. A nigga walk up with a funny colored sweater on or something, you throw that in a rhyme. And I was just always fascinated with the poet, the poetry of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm, mm, mm. So, you know, they say, um, of course, you know this, but like for people that don't know, like Baltimore is definitely like an art city. Yeah. Uh, coming up and your pops playing, being in jazz, your mom's being into uh, poetry. Like, tell me how was it in Baltimore? Set the scene for me and for everybody that's watching. It was like, it was like, uh, I feel like I watched where we are now as a city artistically, I'm extremely proud of. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like from my mother's era, I watched the foundations get laid. Mm -hmm. I watched the houses and the buildings get built on top of it. I watched things get you know, smoothed out and straightened out. Like, you know, there's a lot more nicer studios now. But back then it was like, you know, you had to find it. What you was know some what I mean? of the, 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 the struggles of it, man? Because I know nowadays we talk about niggas ain't supporting me. Yeah. Uh, I don't I can't get no spins on the radio. Oh, it's so much shit that yeah. I feel like you probably look at it like, man, you got it easy. What were some of the struggles in those times? When you were nine looking at it, you might not yeah. have understood it then, yeah. but understand it now. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like you would have to sometimes travel all the way across town for an open mic. Damn. You know what I'm saying? You might have to. But how is that? See, I feel like because people don't, Baltimore is small, so people don't understand yeah. traveling across town because a car is like 15 minutes. Yeah, but I mean, if you it, like, if you was like my mother and you either had a busted up hoopty or we was getting on the bus, mm. that's two three buses yeah. to go to an open mic. You know what I mean? And my mother, it was it, my mother had nine children. Six of us was at home, Damn. so I mean, she's showing up to poetry readings with five six kids with Damn. her. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and uh, and then she she'd stand up there and smash it, get a little money you know, and, and take us to the supermarket. So it was like, you know, it was very bohemian. It was very like... I don't know what that means. You got to help me out. Come on. Like, like, you know... Bohemian. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> help me it out, was man. Real, uh, it was real, you know, dreadlocks and dashikis. Okay, and, you know, okay, you know, okay. Uh, uh, you know, it wasn't fancy. Okay, it was you know rugged. It was rugged, that, that's, yeah. That's Rugged. Ball, it was yeah. real Baltimore. It was real Baltimore. It was mm. rugged. It was rugged. You had Damn. to. You got it out the mud for real. I wish you drank, bro. You know what I'm saying? Great <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on that longer conversation, <laughs> thanks, we thanks. might we might get it in. But um, 
But yeah, it was rugged, man. It was like, you know, it was like I, you know, I imagine like a. Uh, I am legend. Mm. You know what I mean? It was like walking through there trying to find an open mic or, or, or a like, studio or where a cipher. It's like, where is it? Now we see it too much. Now it's everywhere. It's like, yeah, yeah. Now now you're competing with other open mic. Like, you got to check your open mic to be like, is this the same night as so-and-so open mic? Because I don't want right. to, you know what I mean? So, I mean, we're in a good place now. I love, I love seeing where we're at now because I feel like I've watched it grow from nothing to actually something that's... Now, um, I want to do more of these interviews, man, because it's just so dope to just learn history from somebody that was in it. Yeah. So at, at what age, you said you were like nine when you was in Baltimore. Like, what, at what age did you start making music? Um, 14, actually, where you from? McCullough Holmes. Shout out to my man, AJ. Mm -hmm. AJ, super producer, was the first producer I ever worked with. And at the time, me and my peoples, we went to the Baltimore School for the Arts. So we So were, you went there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, okay. So after school... We would go to AJ's studio, which is right up the street, McCullough Homes. We come down McCullough Homes and uh, record with him. And that's when I knew, that's when I really knew I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what I want, you know, this is what I want to spend my life doing, making mm -hmm. music. It's the only place where I feel absolutely comfortable and, and, and myself. Wow. That's so dope, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Talk to me about, like, because I know your style of music is really, like, it's rap. Yeah. Like, it ain't, like... Tight pants, swag, like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't want to say Atlanta, whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, yeah, not yeah, party. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. rap, right? So, like, tell me, like, just the transition of, like, the different music styles and seeing it over the time and you still sticking to your way of making music. Well, I mean, I'm, 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 I've am I'm, become more of a versatile artist, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I think I get that rap because for a lot of years I was kind of stuck there. But, um, but now I find that... You know, the longevity of artists a lot of times um, is credited to their ability to be flexible yep, and move and adapt. through. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you're not going to see me totally switch up and have like, you know, orange dreads and nothing like that. <laughs> it's not, not going to come off as <laughs> it's not going to come off as authentic. I'm gonna look like the old nigga with orange dreads. <laughs> but when you come when you talk about a creative process, like I I love being flexible and versatile. But there's something to be said about holding on to an authenticity of a style. Like, I think Griselda is, is a perfect example exactly. of, like, you know, I mean, that that you could put that shit out, you could have put their shit out in 96, yeah. and it would still bang as hard as it does now. So I think it's showing people that, you know, you don't have to jump on a wave, you don't have to jump on, you know, the trendy thing. A lot of times those things don't, you know, don't stick around. That's a fact. And uh, it's, it's, like you said, it's, and it's definitely, like, motivational, right? Yeah. To see people, even... I mean, to go far as, this might be a stretch, but like J. Cole, you know what I'm saying? The people that's not making these party songs, per se, and just yeah. rapping like Kendrick But Lamar. he can still get on a track with, yep. um, with, with what's my man? Uh, a lot. Little, you, he, little Baby. Uh, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he can get still, on a track with any 21 of these. Savage, yeah, 21 Savage, yeah. 21 Savage, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, Guap Dad 4000 is on Dreamville, you know mm, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like so, yeah. you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, that's a good one. And that's the thing, with, with my label, I started Epic Fam, that's one of the things I want, I want to show the diversity of the city, mm. you know what I mean? We have so many flavors and styles here in Baltimore that, you know, it's, it's really uh, a disservice to just focus on one kind of, of art that's coming out of Baltimore, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and and it's always that relative to the wire kind of street style, which I also love, you know what I'm saying. Um, but it's not all we are, right? You know what I mean. What made you um want to do the uh, the label thing and, and get into that? That's a great question. It's my favorite question. I know you was it. waiting for it. <laughs> I, we was talk, I know you was waiting for it. You wait like, man, come on, man. I know you waiting for it. <laughs> no, man. All right, so I, I've done a lot of touring, right, over over the years. Uh, a lot of independent touring. I've hit the I've hit the road, and I've been able to. I've been fortunate enough to to see a lot of different cities and their music scenes and art scenes. And the question would always come up: It's like, why is Baltimore not on? Or with all the talent that Baltimore has, why are they not known more? And, and my answer to that, as I studied, I was like, we've never introduced the world to a collective. Mm. It's always one guy. There's okay. always one group. Okay. But if you look at all of the cities that we know for music, we meet them through a collective. We don't know nothing about uh, Atlanta rap until Dungeon Family comes on the scene. Mm. Outkast, Goody Mob, oh, that's a collective. Okay. You know, we don't know nothing about uh, uh, Houston rap and Port Arthur and them until we meet 
uh, Ghetto Boys, Bun B, uh, Pimp C, you know what I'm saying? All that, a collective, a crew of people. We don't know nothing about, uh, um, we don't know nothing about Staten Island rap until we meet Wu-Tang. Mm. We don't know nothing about Philly rap until we meet um, State Property. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, all of these cities, we meet we meet these cities through a collective. And so I, I, sat, I, I sat back and I was like, damn, Baltimore, we've had a couple crews, but we've never really went hard and, and said to the world, all right, this is us. Do you think, and this it's, it's goes back to, you know, your, your neck of the woods or whatever, and even my neck of the woods, is it because people don't really rep it that much when they leave? Because when somebody say, why isn't Baltimore on or why why don't why do we don't have talent? I'm like, I said it before. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But then I think as I do my research, like, uh, first of all, you're crazy because we can name, I can name so many artists that's from Baltimore right, right now. Right. But then we, we look at people like, you know, like, this is not artists, but Carmelo, right? Yeah. Melo went to um, fucking... Uh, um, Mount Royal, I yeah. think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like he was he was he lived on Myrtle Avenue, right? Yeah. Like in the mm-hmm. trenches. Yeah. But somehow down the line, it's from New York. Like I'm yeah. confused. Leave for me. Well, he was he was born in New York, um, and you know came here. But I, there's a thing that happens here a lot of times when people from Baltimore become successful. Uh, the the some of the people around them they find out that okay, I can't keep kicking it with these these people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they gotta. They, at, at a certain point, they have to separate themselves because of, you know, the it's jeopardizing their the success. Yeah. yeah, and that stigma being related to them is jeopardizing their success. I think that we have yet to have a healthy group of people around a successful Baltimorean. You we know got what I'm saying? So many healthy from minded, Baltimore. like you know what I mean. We got so much talent, so many great people who have done awesome things, but then they get to a certain point and they're hurt because jealousy. You know, backstab, all kinds of things. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, Jazz and them from Drew Hill, man, they came home and people they grew up with tr- um, stuck them up, tried to rob them. Yeah, I can see that. You know that. what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got all those kind of stories that there's a lot of pain here. There's a lot of trauma. And we just got to keep pushing. I'm, I'm, I, for one, am somebody that I'm like, yo, I'm going to put my all into the city. The city did so much for me growing up. It taught me so many things that... um. I'm dedicated to stay here until, you know, until we get it in. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's, to answer your question, a lot of people have not put that kind of time and effort into the city. Once once they get hurt or they see it's not right, then they they, they off to L.A., they off to New York, they off to Atlanta, and mm. then they're done with us. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm just, I don't know, I just don't want to give up. Not and that's yet. what got not you yet. into the trying to do the uh, label thing. And it's yeah. crazy that you said that, because I'll never forget I was at a uh, conference, because I was doing politics a little bit. I was like the... Um, uh, some in high school, I was like the set on a committee with. Doctor, you were on the youth uh, commission? No, nah, I was actually like the the student and amb- the student commissioner for the entire Baltimore City Schools. Like okay. I this Doctor Alonzo, I, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I sat on the board with them every Tuesday. We did it, whatever. But okay. I say to say, I never forget. I was at a meeting and a, and a young boy was like, um, because I too wanted to grow up, move out of Baltimore, right? And yeah. somebody was like, yo, if all the people that we had in Baltimore were talented and all the good people left Baltimore than where that leaves us. And I'm like, yeah. damn. Yep. You damn. know what somebody told me? I was getting ready. I was. I had my plan ready. I was ready. I was like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then we're going to move to New York. And somebody said, well, you know, you, you've you built something here. And when you go to New York, you're going to have to start all over. Mm. Because there's cats there that have already built something. You're going to have to navigate through them to get to the top of that. And I thought about that, and I was like, hmm. That sounds a lot fucking harder than <laughs> what I got right than now. Than building on my shit that I got <laughs> right. home. I rather I rather have a castle in Baltimore and a and a, a a small kingdom in Baltimore than a fucking hole in the wall uh, studio apartment in New York. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I I love my city. My city loves me back because of that. And I don't think I would have got that if I'd have moved anywhere else. Talking about the label side of it, man. What type of artists are you looking for and that you have on your side right now? Right now, I got I got some hungry artists that are authentic. One uh, one of my favorites right now is Wifty Bengora. Uh, she is she she sings, produces, writes, does her own thing. Um, everybody has their own styles. Tony Champagne, young guy out of South Baltimore. Uh, Prince Keys, like 15, 16. Dude is like killing it. Um, 
And, you know, and then I got my veterans. Apex a genius. He's a veteran battle rapper. Y1, um, Ira. Like, all everybody has their own authentic style themselves. So I'm uh, Dre Thompson, one of my favorite writers and collaborators. Um, and so I'm just looking for artists that are authentically themselves um, and that are hungry and passionate about it, uh, that want to do this for, you know, for some longevity and not just... You know, not just trying to get a quick hot one in and <laughs> and be out. Facts. Question. If you had to choose, right? I don't know if it's cliche or whatever, but I'm just curious. If you had to choose one, Jay-Z or Nas? Nas. Why? Uh, the penmanship. Mm. Like, I think, I think. But you I, into the business now. I, now that, oh, oh, you mean on the business no, side? No, period, not period. No, oh. all around. You got to choose one. I would say Nas because Nas kind of, Nas persevered. He's persevered. Now he's got artists like Davies, mm. you know what I mean, that are coming up under him. And I, I think that um, for me, Nas's pen was always just just more accurate. You know what mm. I mean? The way he can, you could close your eyes and listen to some of Nas stuff and be right there in the in the in 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 the in the moment when it's happening. Okay. So you, you would appreciate this question. Big L or Pop? Big L. Oof. Lyrically. You talking about lyrically? Yeah, I'm talking yeah, about yeah. whatever. Lyrically, Big L. I think if Big L would have lived longer, he definitely would have been as big, if not bigger than Pac. All right, so this might not be fair, but lyrically, in his prom, Big L, and this might be a dumb question, Big L or Cassidy? Ooh, in his prom. In his prom. <laughs> Ooh, I I might have to get at the cast, bro. Okay. I gotta get at the cast, man. And his prom cast was a monster. Yeah, he was sick with it. You talking about the guy who embarrassed Freeway? <laughs> he was you know sick. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, nah, Cassidy definitely. You talking about in their prom? You know, it's unfortunate. It's not fair because Big L did get gunned down in his prom, but but Cassidy definitely mm. was a monster lyrically in his prom. Man, it's great talking to you, man. Easy Jackson, yo, you, you talk about your label. You got this track that you just dropped, you about to drop. Yeah, you, yeah. you got stars on there. Yeah, man, yeah. tell me about shout this. Out, shout out my man Stars. Uh, yeah, we got this track, Get Yo. It's a Baltimore Club track. Mm. I love Baltimore Club music. That's another thing, you know, a lot of people don't know, and they're going to learn that soon. Um, but I, I love Baltimore Club music. Favorite B Baltimore Club music song of all time? Um, you got to choose one. Girl, don't you worry about a thing. Yeah. Cause I will always be here. Yeah. And if you want me, hurry. Yeah. Cause I'll be right here. Every time that joint drop, wow. that's my favorite. Yeah. Favorite club that you used to go to? Oh, uh, the tunnel. The tunnel? Yeah, I've never we used been. to go. We used to go to the tunnel. The tunnel what? was my shit. Paradox. Ooh. And the Paradox, used to be there Paradox like on college in the night. On college night, yeah, Friday nights. Bro, I've been there. I'll never forget. I was in high school. I shouldn't have been in there, right? Yeah, see, that was the thing. I, I started forget. going in high school. I, uh, <laughs> I went in there, right? They had the strippers. They had the, like, yeah. on East floor, right? Yeah. Swear to God. This might sound crazy, but it is what it oh, is. Oh, you think about the Choices? One, no. Choices had the strippers. Choices. choices yes, not the Paradox. Yeah. Paradox, so Paradox been around for a long time. Yeah, so I was talking yeah. Choices. Yeah. Never forget Choices, right? I'm in high school, not supposed to be in there. Yeah. Go. I saw, so I'm, I'm, I'm so, you know, the downstairs open at a certain time. I don't know if it's like two or something like that. Yeah. So I'm going upstairs, but the middle floor is the male strippers, right? Yeah. And then the third floor is the, is the lady strippers, the yeah. female strippers. So I'll never forget, I'm walking past the second floor and it's packed, but it's my first time being there. I don't know what's going on. So I'm trying to go in there. The security, like, you can't go in there. But I see nothing but, but girls. I'm like, yo, <laughs> I'm like, nah, I need to be in there. Like, what's going on? It's, I mean, it's packed, bro, because I went upstairs. <laughs> And it was like, it was a, a few guys where they, they weren't throwing no money. The girls yeah. is bored, yawning and shit. So I went back to go, the, I went back downstairs to go to the main floor and I'm passing the second floor and I'm like, yo, I'm trying to get in there. And I'll never forget, I was in house. I'm like, yo, shit, I might have to be a stripper, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, it was so many girls think, in there. You know, bro, honest, they had honestly, to I think, I, honestly, I think every young man who ever walked through there probably at some point thought about it because of that <sighs> amount of women and bro. money. Money that, th that was being made in there. Choices is a classic. Um, I lived on Maryland Lafayette, literally a block over. Mm. So my corner was lit. On, on Friday and Saturday nights, nah, but um, but yeah, this song "Get Yo" it's by uh, um, co-produced with James Nasty. Mm. Um, we we uh, and I put together a record. It's me, Stars, Wifty. I was telling you about Wifty Bengora and uh, and an artist named Chaotic Couture. Mm. Um, and it's just it's Baltimore club music, but all four of the MCs are all like we all have different styles. We all have different followings. So it's a record that I you know I'm hoping that. You know, will not just you know 
pop in Baltimore, but also show the diversity of who we are. We've seen a lot of artists that wasn't into club music get into it um, yeah. and make songs over club mixes. Um, what made you want to do this? A conversation I had with Boo Man a few years ago. Mm. You know DJ Boo Man? I don't. So Boo Man, you know, um, you know Jim Jones, um, the J Jimmy Jones that just passed away. I've heard of him. Uh, Watch out for the big girls. Yeah, uh -huh. So him, you know, Doo Doo Kids and and Boo Man and them, they're like Baltimore club this legacy legends. Right here. Legend. <laughs> this so legacy. one day I was talking to Boo Man and Boo Man said he said to me very clearly he said, "Yo, if rappers don't start rapping over Baltimore club music." We're going to lose it. Mm. And somebody else going to grab it. They're going to start doing it. And um, and I watched him comp, comp put out a track where he's rapping over some club music. And then DJ Class dropped mm. I'm the Shit. I'm the, yeah. And Kanye jumped on it. Sheesh. And I was like, and I was like, yo, Boo Man is right, yo. Like, if we, I mean, it's our sound. You know what I mean? Like, you got to get a pass to do a go go record. If you're not from DC, yeah, we seeing it now. Like yeah. um, Cardi B just dropped on the um shit with uh, what's the uh producer from Baltimore? Um, I think it's the WAP song. I forgot the uh. Oh yeah, uh, uh with the there's some holes yeah, in this house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. see, it's it's happening like yeah. in front of our eyes, man. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm happen. like, if we don't start rapping on this shit, man, we gonna lose it. So that's my thing. I, you know, and as lyrically skilled as I am, I know that I can rap on anything, mm. especially club music. Okay. So I, you know, so I'm like, let's go, let's rock with it. All right, man. Yo, it's definitely uh, a pleasure having you, dog. I done learned some stuff, yo, bro. Thank you, man. I've been, I've been wanting to sit down with you for a minute, I man. I, lo it, I love your work, man. I love what you bring in the Baltimore. For thank real. you, man. I, um, I definitely hope I can get more interviews like this because I think you are like one of the first of his kind, honestly, when it comes to like just being a historian and, and yeah. being in the city at those moments, man. Yeah. And, um, you inspire me. Thanks, you bro. You inspire me to, to do more of these interviews, and I, I'm, I'm going to start man. reaching out just to, to have a collection of this, and hopefully I yeah. can get a series of these because I think yeah. I appreciate it. And that's how much I'm, I'm being yeah. serious, man. Thank yeah. you. Let me um, know, man. I got some I got some people you should reach out. I could tell you to reach out to, too, that could really give you some you know, some real good. I reached out record. to uh, Rod Lee, but um, we're going to see if that can work out. That's a, <laughs> a historian. Rod Lee, yo, come around here and talk to my man, Jay Hill. No, he gave me playing, love. Yo. He gave me love. Oh, he gave you love. <laughs> he gave me love. He gave, I, won't, right. I won't do that. He gave me okay. love. All right. uh, good, if you can't manage, just let everybody know where they can follow you at and everything. Yo, I'm um, at Easy Rider, E Z E W R I T E R on everything. And then uh, Epic Fam, E P I C F A M, be more, at Be More Epic Fam on uh, Instagram, Epic Fam 1 on Twitter. You know, we're building, so, you know, follow us, help us get get up there. Get Show is dropping, you know, July 30th on everything. And it's tomorrow, July 30th is Baltimore's birthday, too. Mm. So that's another reason why we're dropping it on our date. So. I got to research that, man. Yeah, yeah. Listen, as Funk Flex would say, everybody can't get up here and do 30 minutes. Listen, we usually do 15 minutes. But really? Oh, shit. Look, 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 look. This conversation ain't for regular people, man. Yeah, so man. I just appreciate you, my guy. Thank it's you, a conversation bro. series. Easy Jackson, uh, Mr. Yeah. J. Hill is a rat. We out.